baby. Maybe. We'll see. Welcome back to the Heat Check Podcast. I am your host, Chris Patrick, back with the one and only infamous Cody Tallman. Infamous. Nice. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm doing great, Cody. Thank you. Um, No Michael Benjamin today. Um, We're doing this just one week after the regularly scheduled monthly uh, pod recording. Um, Because as you know, if you're a... uh, another listener coming back we do this podcast once a month guaranteed but sometimes me and cody will sneak in a few extra podcasts here and there uh for your listening pleasure and entertainment purposes as always um so i'm happy to be back we had to do this because holy shit a lot has happened in the last seven days um too much yeah too much bad stuff too bad stuff (laughs) good a little good a little bad it's crazy um i wish we could do this five days a week because there's always stuff going on in the valley with these teams it's wild but we're gonna break it all down for you of course we're talking sun's playoffs a couple games have happened uh we're talking deandre hopkins a suspension has happened um we're we're gonna talk about the cardinals outlook with the you know with six games without him we're gonna talk about the suns and uh you know what they're doing it's just gonna be it's just gonna be a fun time and we're gonna break it all down share our take and uh have, have a good time what's up cody yeah how you doing bro dude i think i'm gonna lose this bet who was the guy you grant williams grant williams <laughs> do you know anything about grant about this guy grant williams um i know on tuesday Tuesday's game, he scored like 22 or something. Oh. Hold on. Yeah, 21. All right, he scored 21. 21. And he played 35 minutes. So I'm like, this dude can score nine points, right? Wrong. Wrong. Um, Wrong. Yeah, so that's going on. And then uh, the string's pretty good. Yeah, we uh, we are doing this with a little assistance of the liquid courage, <laughs> as always. Um, we were The beers weren't... Cody brought warm beers over what and is, I'm sorry he put them in my fridge and so they're they're getting cold but they weren't cold enough so I had the bright idea I bought a Red Bull this morning so I had the bright idea to make us a couple vodka Red Bulls um and so that's what we're sipping on <laughs> this is not a sponsorship plug it's not this bad <laughs> not bad um so yeah let's get right into it we're gonna talk about the Suns here first um Ugh. they're up 2-1 in the series against the Mavericks they won their first two at home um, and just lost their third game last night. Uh, by the way, we're recording this on Saturday, May 7th in the uh, Valley Sports Plug Studio B. Studio B. Studio B. <laughs> um, but yeah, the game last night, uh, 94 to 103 in Dallas. Dallas took that one. Um, it was I, I didn't get to watch it start to finish, I'll admit. I did watch the most of the third quarter and the fourth quarter and saw... Um, it seemed like they just held, they got the, the Dallas Mavericks got a little bit ahead, got that 10 point, 16 point lead kind of fluctuated and they, they held it the whole and time. they held it and <laughs> it just, it just kind of, it yeah. was once they slipped it away, it was pretty evenly battled and, um, it was just a, a pretty well fought game. Um, I actually got some, uh, some tweets here that I want to pull up. Um, just to get some quick reaction, and uh, Mike couldn't be here today, but I did see that Michael Benjamin tweeted uh, about the game. He said, "Couldn't be worried, even if I tried to be. Regroup and reset. Hashtag Suns vs Mavs. Hashtag NBA refs need a pay raise." <laughs> Wait, so side note: How much does Mike tweet? Ah, uh, I don't think he tweets very often, so he felt some type of way about this. Huh. I, I've i never had a Twitter. Anyway. You should tweet. What do you want me to tweet about? I don't know. You, on you have a lot of opinions on, on this Chris's podcast. couch, and this drink is delicious. Yeah, there you okay, go. Cool. Sorry. You could tweet about Kyler Murray when you're frustrated. <laughs> See how many people agree with you. It's just a big echo chamber. Yeah, basically. Anyway. Um. No. Yeah. No, but so Mike, that 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 uh that tweet by Mike, um, I, I brought that up because I want to kind of talk about it. Um, I'm not worried either, to be honest. Mike's not worried. I'm not worried. Um, I like we kind of said we figured five or six games the Suns would wrap this series and that the Mavs would steal one. Um, well, now, now we can go to the game on Tuesday. Yeah, did you secure that? <laughs> no, we'll we'll talk about that. We'll talk <laughs> about that later. Um, you said, but you're not worried though, are you? No, I'm not worried. No, I, I mean I they they take they got to win tomorrow. And then there's no way that they lose game five at home. No. And, and to me, it was like uh, afterwards and, and doing some show prep here, I looked at the box score and it was like, 
it, you can kind of it was it was kind of hard to see exactly what happened because we out rebounded them. Um, we were pretty much on the same pace for assist. We had 23, they had 25. Uh, they had a few more blocks, and I think it was just the the steals and no, the turnovers. Seventeen turnovers but, versus eight. But is a oh, they don't have points. 50, off Fifty points in the paint. I mean, come on, but for the, the Mavericks. I thought I, it might have been a misleading stat when I was looking at it on ESPN, but it looked like the the, the Mavs didn't have that many points off turnovers. But I, I could be wrong. But you look when you look yeah. at the three pointers, we made the same amount of three pointers. Both teams made thirteen, but the Mavericks launched up eleven more. They literally shot fourteen more shots than we did. Didn't they go? They went to the fourth quarter with uh, Doncic had five fouls too. Oh, he had five fouls. He got yeah. in foul trouble. Yeah, yeah. I saw some stuff um, online where, and then that's like Mike kind of alluded to that in the tweet that the re- NBA refs need a pay raise. Um, I don't quite know, not having watched the whole game, I don't know what he was insinuating, but I have seen Mavs fans complaining about the Suns getting unfair calls. And then from what I've seen, it seems like the Mavs have kind of gotten some unfair calls too. So that might be a fan bias thing. And these (laughs) these refs are just bad all around. Um, and every side has a a case to make, but, um, from what, from what you had seen, do you think that the refs are skewed one way or the other? Do you think they're doing a bad job all around or... Um, what, what's your opinion? Well, if you're talking specifically about that game, I didn't watch a, a lot of it. Well, no, I watched I watched some of it, but it was like it was like 50 feet okay. away. Then as a, then a, seri- <laughs> a series as the whole, um, I think they're doing the best they can. I I don't know. I know when they played uh, the Pelicans, the first game of that series was terrible, and then they totally. So yeah, after that first game. Uh, Monty complained about it, and yeah. then the next game was completely uh, officiated completely differently. So, yeah, um, and I, I mean, I saw. I don't, I don't think it's too bad. I, I don't know. I yeah. think it's going both ways. I don't, I don't see it lopsided or. That's what I'm saying. Like, if if there's a miss call on both, if it's if it's things are being called equally, whether it's miss calls or they're letting them play a little more, I have no problem with it. Like, I saw a play specifically. I think it was either in the end of the third quarter or the fourth quarter where Jalen Brunson was driving in, dropping his shoulder into Devin Booker, and he was just Booker was just standing there with his hands straight up, playing good defense, and Brunson just kept banging into him, and then he shot like a fadeaway jumper and fell to the ground, and it bounced in, and they didn't call a foul, and I thought that was perfect. Yeah. But the fans, they they just see Brunson flopping, flippy flopping, and then go into the ground and so they want to foul they keep i don't know who they were showing on the bench i think it might have been tim hardaway jr whoever's injured right now they kept going to the camera shot of him on the bench on espn and um he's just like all animated he's like Breaking and out. one that's yeah. a foul you know and it's like i no, that's great defense okay i did see one last night um i think it was don Chich, don Chich was driving in for the layup and i forgot what sons player but uh someone came up and, like slapped him um, but he, so Doncic made it and, you know, he just got some, you know, tough defense and they didn't call it and one. And then they, they panned the camera over to the, the sideline for the Mavs and it's fucking Mark Cuban. And he's freaking out. He's like, you can totally see what he's saying. Like, you yeah. can, like uh, read his lips. He's like, that's a foul. That's a foul. <laughs> and he was freaking out. It was great. Um, so I did actually, cause I remember going, Oh, look, there's Mark Cuban's bitch ass. So I that's probably what they're talking about the Mavs fans. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it was pretty rough. I'm shocked they didn't call that. Yeah, yeah, and that's and what that's the thing like Luca as much as he does have the star power, I don't know how much respect he gets from these refs. I mean, I'm not I'm not watching a lot of Mavs games, but I know it does take some time for you to get the respect from the refs in these game in these leagues. And then especially when it you're bitching every night it, it's hard to give him the benefit of the doubt, especially when I see him and kind of like Jalen Brunson kind of flip flopping on the court. Um, I don't know, but describe Luka Doncic in one word: baller. Baller. He man, he is something else. I I hate it so. much. I was much. gonna say squishy because he is a little. He is a little so- soft. Not like as a like not soft as like, like, like soft, physically soft. soft. Like if you touch him, he's soft. He looks no. like if you touch him, he goes, oh. <laughs> the Pillsbury dough Slovenian. Um, that, was, that was a good one. Thank you. But no, he. <laughs> I, I hate it. I he's I hate him because he's so good. Because there was a play where he does his little European like I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my uh, pivot foot planted and I'm just gonna I'm gonna 
spin in a circle on my pivot foot and and fake you out five times before I finally before you finally bite on one it, and then I go past. It looks you. so slow too. It it's looks like he just like slow. It looks back forward and then it's like, dude. But yeah. it, wor- it works out. But then he fakes. He's gonna fade and he just slams right on your chest. Right. Exactly. He knows how to. Um, he knows how to manipulate the situation to his advantage and he's patient the patience too is stellar like he'll be doing a little hesitation in the lane and then he'll see the defender take even one second off and then he'll slam to the rim and get a nice easy left-handed layup on you within the blink of an eye and so i i hate him because he's really fucking good and obviously he's the only reason the mavericks are in the playoffs he's the only reason they've made it to the second round it it even it's taken herculean efforts from him but they won two games to the last series without him which i was surprised there you go well against the against the dysfunctional utah jazz (laughs) yeah um didn't go bear request a trade they either had to trade him or donovan mitchell i can't remember both those guys anyway fuck that team i like like we said, we said this on a previous episode. Having been betting on NBA games throughout the season, there were like times when I would put a little parlay together and see the Jazz playing um, like the fucking Sacramento Kings. I'm like, oh, that should be a nice easy win <laughs> for the lose? Jazz, and they lose by like fifteen. <laughs> they don't just lose; they lose by like fifteen, dude. No, that's it's why you do at that home. You do that Utah. same game. You pick that Go Bear rebounds, man. I can't. I can't. But okay, so. I want to go to I want to go to another since we're in the Twitter sphere here, um, our uh, local radio station ninety eight seven love those guys. Was love, that Burnsy? Love those guys. So Vince Murata, uh, he Dave Burns, <laughs> Dave Burns, such a good guy, <laughs> such a such a good guy. So uh, Vince Murata tweeted out, "This honestly should have been a twenty five point blowout. Strange game, and that's kind of the same vibe I got looking at the box score because it looks pretty pretty even. It does, but it." It felt like the Suns were getting their ass whooped the whole time. At the same time, it looked it's like a, they couldn't make a basket, but yet it was still a game. nine. Was it nine point game? Yeah, but then Dave Burns uh, retweeted with a comment. Comment tweeted, um, Dave Burns ninety eight seven said, "I'm sitting here trying to figure out why it wasn't. Jay is the first thing I'm coming up with. So I wonder, Jay Crowder. I I wonder if he's nineteen pointing, points. I wonder if he's pointing to a specific instance where that Jay Crowder fucked up because if you look at the box score, well, he was the leading got, scorer. Yeah, nineteen yeah. points, most score, points scored by the Suns. Five of eight three point shooting. That's what we've needed from Jay. Yep. Like Mike said on the last episode, I need it. I need. He, Mike said he needs it, and Jay's yep. brought it. The last two games, he's been money. He's been hitting those threes. He's been pulling them with confidence. He probably p- spent hours in the gym taking 500 three-point shots between these series. He had to. Because he fucked up in, in the first <laughs> Who round. Who goes one for 15 Man. from three? Yeah, so, I mean, 7 to 12 overall. That's a pretty good percentage. Played 36 minutes. Um, I, Again, I, I'm sorry. I didn't watch the game. Should Probably should have done that since I was, knew I was going to come on here and talk about yeah, it. Yeah, but it's the other... Mavs players step, stepped up because Doncic was in foul trouble. He only played 34 minutes. Yeah. So, so they, they finally stepped up and... Jay is the first thing... Burden says Dave, Jay is the first mean, thing though? I'm coming up with. Yeah, what does that mean? Because he did good. Uh, but it must have been... So, it might have been something defensively. It's because we didn't watch the whole game. Yeah, if you're, if you're watching this on YouTube... Um, please comment down below if you know why Burns is, uh, you know, blaming Jay Crowder here, or uh, why that's the first thing he's coming up with. If he, because it's that's what I read into it is that he's blaming him, but I just I really don't know. But um, okay, so again, um, staying in Twitter, um, for this last comment, this comes courtesy of uh, Davy or Delmo. Um, we love him. He's uh, a staple here at VSP. Uh, we're going to get him on the show here one of these days, but he tweeted out after the game, damn near perfect game from Dallas and a nine point loss paired with Chris career bad first half. That was quiet. Oh shit. Did I not finish writing that? I got to I'm sorry, Davey. <laughs> I should have done this more smoothly. It's all right. Let me pull out Twitter here. Cause I was right. I was writing these down for a show prep before you got here. And then, uh, you, you showed up, you rang the doorbell right as I was writing down Davey's tweet. So yeah, let me just start that from the top one more time. Um, damn near perfect Oops. game from Dallas and a nine-point loss. Paired with Chris, career bad first half. That was quite the game. So I was close. Um, but yeah, it seems like it was quite the game indeed. And um, so Davey watched the whole game, obviously. He's saying Chris Paul had a terrible first half. 
And that's what that's what we were saying. That's what it looks like. It looks like they got out to a bad start. Dallas got a little bit ahead. And by the time the Suns got their shit together, it was just tit for tack or tick for tack, how, whatever the saying is. They just they just kept that margin. And because even when the Mavericks would pull up ahead by 16 or whatever, um, the Suns would bring it back to like 10, 8, get it, get it under. But um, so it was a battle throughout and it was just that bad start that really that really fucked us up but that's what it, that that's what but for me he only went five for nine from the field chris paul chris paul all together but i think yeah. he, what was his turn how many turnovers did he have oh shit <laughs> that's probably what he's i remember about. peeking at the espn app at one point and it saw like uh it wasn't it was like a scathing like play-by-play it was like chris paul bad turnover he had seven turnovers yeah that's not chris paul no yeah that's rough so um, sounds like the the tail of the tape is the Dallas Mavericks played a hell of a game. The Suns had a bad start, took a while to get rolling in Dallas, and uh, just gave them one. We just gave them a free one. Um, so uh, har- uh, winding it all the way back, hearkening to what Mike said, he said uh, regroup and reset. That's all they got to do. We got another game in Dallas coming up on yeah, that's tomorrow. That's the worst game he's had the whole playoffs. Exactly. We got another game coming up tomorrow. By the time this podcast is released... It'll either be three one Suns or it'll be two two, but I have a strong feeling that it's going to be three one. Oh yeah, sorry, I had to get comfortable. No, go ahead. Welcome <laughs> to the therapy, the casting couch. This is the t- <laughs> the cast, the therapy couch. cast. Well, uh, so, what do you want to see me do, Chris? Well, how badly <laughs> do you want this job, Cody? Pretty bad. I need it to oh. support my mother. Too bad it doesn't pay. I'm sorry. Oh shit. Because we don't make any money on nope. this podcast. Because we love to do it. We love to do it. Um, this is the Stay in School Heat Check podcast. So, sorry. Um, <laughs> All right, what were we talking about? We're talking about the Suns, man. Oh, we're talking about the right. Suns. We, yep. we broke down these tweets. Um, I love it. I love the response. I love the positivity. It sounds like everyone's a little confused by that game, but um, the Suns in four is dead. Suns in four is dead. That's okay, though. We get another home game. So, <laughs> yep. Yep. So we'll play on Sunday and then I think it'll come back to the Valley Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. It's a pretty quick turnaround. Hopefully we can go to that game. That would be tight. It'd be a lot of fun. Um, but we'll see what happens. So let's, uh, let's shift gears here. Um, I guess pretty quick. We might be able to go back to the suns if something comes up, but, um, some breaking news happened this week. Um, literally I think that a day or two after we recorded the last episode, DeAndre Hopkins suspended for six weeks to start yeah, the was, season. That was Monday for PEDs. Right? Yeah, I think that news broke yeah, on Monday. Monday, and then he put out a, a statement um, on the second. So yeah, literally, yeah, literally a, a day after we recorded, he put out this statement. Um, he said, and I'm just going to read it here. It'll be up on the screen on YouTube. In my 10 year NFL career, I have never tested positive for using performance enhancing drugs <laughs> to learn that my November test came back with trace elements of a banned substance. I was confused and shocked. I am very mindful of what I put in my body and have always taken a holistic approach. Of course. So I am working with my team to investigate how this could have happened. But even as careful as I have been, clearly I wasn't careful enough for that. I apologize to Cardinals fans, my teammates and the entire Cardinals organization. I never want to let my team down. I fully intend to get to the bottom of this. As soon as I have more information, I will share it. Such DeAndre a, Hopkins. Such a cookie cut, cutter. Yeah, response. that wasn't written by him, was it? That was like his PR team. Well, I'm pretty sure he's his own agent, though. Um, but that's... that's uh, that, Okay. Yeah, he he could have written it. Then, then I mean, props to him, man. He might have yeah, written it. Yeah, I don't think he, he doesn't have an agent. He negotiates his own shit. But that's not even what we're talking about. Yeah, not um, true. Do you believe it, though? Do you believe it? Well, it's going to cost him like $5.2 because he won't get paid for the six, those six weeks. Yeah, uh, he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll be fine. So no, I I don't know. And you said well, because who who else tested positive with him? Um, hold on. Yeah. Well, and that's what's crazy is like it's May. This news broke on May second, and this is from a November test. So six months ago. Why are I, we just finding out about? So does that mean there was already an appeals process or already a double check or something? And that's why, because you told me he's not appealing it, right? Yeah, no, they came out the same day and said they were not appealing it. They were just accepting it. Yeah, and I think it's important to note 
Um, we've seen these type of PED suspensions before, and if you look at the NFL's banned substance list, a lot of it's not like people think it's like this sh- the shady guy in a hoodie outside a gold gym giving you steroids. <laughs> but a lot of these quote unquote banned substances. What, a, what kind of experiences have you had? <laughs> hey, they were dark times. I don't want to talk about it, okay? Um, no, but. <laughs> What I'm saying is a lot of these banned substances you can get at GNC. You can get at your local Kroger store. Um, it's fries out here in Arizona, but um, we're trying to go global, baby. And no, I'm saying um, it's not fair. It's not fair. And especially if the, these guys have a trainer or a dietitian or someone who's making them protein shakes, um, making their meals, and they happen to be like, maybe they don't know. It could be 100% innocent. It could be their trainer or whoever's mixing yeah. up these shakes don't, didn't even know what the banned substance list is, which is no excuse, honestly. they should. You should be careful if you're making millions in your so, jobs, depending on Exactly. It. Yeah, it was, um, what was it, last year. Last year was Will Fuller, no, two years ago, Will Fuller and uh, Bradley Roby on the Texans when uh, Hopkins was still on the Texans. They both got suspended for the same shit that Hopkins just got suspended for. And they were using, um, or they were getting treatment from the same, what they call medical professional. So, um, it's, it's happened to other people too. So I don't know what Hopkins is, was doing. Do you have the name of the banned substance there? No, it's an ESPN article, man. <laughs> That's what I always hate. They, they suck never, ass. they never tell you like, they never drop any of the juicy fucking details. They never tell you what the substance is or what it's no. um, alleged to be. Why it's labeled a PED? Um, does it? What does it do to increase the performance to where it's? Um, deserves a six week suspension like that's what like people that's why i feel like the but, stigma comes in where it's like oh it's a steroid or totally uh, but then it's like dude the season doesn't start until fucking september like is that that shit's gonna be out of his system i don't, I don't see what well and that's true because if it was a november test it's, it's we're, a performing enhancing well if it's a november drug, test though so. he's mid-season in november oh was it from then because that's what, yeah, he, that's, I think that's what he just said well, here in his statement, Well, motherfucker didn't right? even play anyway. <laughs> that's what he was saying is in from my November... Oh, shit, I just lost it. So what, he was out... Yeah, the, seven... why my November test came back. But that's what's crazy. So if this was a November test that came back with trace elements of a PED, why wasn't he suspended last season? Why is this just now coming out May 1st, going into this next season, when the Cardinals finally have a... A promising I mean I'm not gonna say finally like the last two years I felt were pretty promising and they fumbled the bag but like there you can't, we can't we a week ago we were Fumble optimistic as fuck about the Cardinals going into the season were we not oh yeah I mean aside from being annoyed with Kyler and his little bitch assness and his contract shit but that was his that was gonna be he's going to, into his third year and that's the year where it was like you know you come into form I was super excited for last year yeah. Especially when we were like seven and one, just kicking ass. That was great. Yeah. But him, Hopkins getting hurt last year really screwed us. But what 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 gets me is like the dude's twenty nine years old. He he didn't he missed what seven games last year. Who DeAndre Hopkins? Hopkins, yeah, yeah. Let's look that up because I think. And um, then next year he's he's, he's going to be on the wrong side of thirty. He's going to miss six games. I, <laughs> it's not I, a good start to his no, t- tenure with the Cardinals. I, I don't not, see. You, you can't deny that he's not going to be a, a, around for much longer if this keeps going on. Yeah, because we we were looking at contracts on the last episode, and uh, how long how long is he secured for with this with this contract he's on with us? Well, yeah, the, right when they trade for him, they give him that extension. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> um, he he played ten games last year. Okay, so he missed eight games. And one of the games he played, he only played the first quarter, or excuse me, first half. That was he got injured in the Packers game. I was at that stupid game when uh, oh, the Thursday yeah. night game when AJ wreck. Green didn't turn around, or we would have won. Ooh, AJ yeah. Green, aren't you glad he's coming back? Do you think he learned how to turn around since that game? <laughs> I hope so. He better. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, no, you're right because he's. I mean, well, okay, so last year that's. I didn't When's re- his birthday? I was gonna say I didn't realize he was that young. He's like almost our age. He's younger than Mike. Well, he's twenty nine, man. Docs. That's what'd you say? <laughs> I said Docs. I exposed Mike's age. No, you did. No, not really though. I just said that DeAndre Hopkins is younger than him. Okay, June six. All right, he's gonna be. He's fucking our age. He's dude. gonna you're be thirty. He, you're like he's gonna be thirty. I feel pretty good. I'm almost thirty. 
I, I'm not going to go play in the National Football League based on audience. Oh, come on, man. These players uh, don't come out of college till they're 23, 24 years old. Oh, you think and they Hop, Hop didn't and, stay four years so you're in saying, college? You're saying players only have a four-year prime? Like, J.J. Watt, what, he's 36? No, I'm saying... Uh, you're missing the point. I'm not missing the point. Jerry Rice was fucking 42 say- playing wide receiver. <laughs> Yeah, and he wasn't that good when he was forty two. Okay, no, but he was on the NFL in the NFL, wasn't he? Yeah. What, what do you? What about Randy Moss? How old was Randy Moss when he retired? Mid thirties, thirty six. Yeah. Terrell yeah. Owens. How old was Terrell Owens? Why when don't he you retired? just say how about Larry Fitzgerald? There you go. Larry was still productive. He couldn't get down. Like you no. find the no, great but I'm receiver. just saying he's supposed to be our best player, and, he, and he the motherfucker's be. not available. Do well, you know what? You want know the best traded well, as, as a football player? Availability. Availability, yeah. Being on the fucking field. Facts. That's what I'm saying. So he's going to be 30 years old in well, June. Okay, yeah. So it's like, what, are you going to pay him a, give him a three-year contract and pay him fucking $80 million when he's 32? No, you're not. Um, $80 million, 32, so you would secure him until he's 36. Yeah, I would do that. You would? That's why you, that's why you just traded yeah, for that's his You just la- traded for Hollywood. That's though. his last big contract, and then after that... Um, like you said last week, you give him the Larry Fitz 11 mil every year after that. Well, yeah, I'd give him the one year 11 mil, but I'm not giving him 25 million a year. No, not 25 million, 20 million a year. You no would give him, tw- you wouldn't give him 20 million a year. No, 15 million a year. If for he's four 32, years? 15 million a year for four years, so 60 million over four years. Today, 32 yeah. to 36 though. No, no, no. For D Hop, no. But we're talking about a generational I'll, I'll talent. Give him a, I'll give him a two-year contract. Cody, we're talking, tops. we're talking the new guard here. We're talking this. DeAndre Hopkins could be regarded as the next Randy Moss, the next Terrell Owens. So, if, would you <laughs> he's pay? Got to play football. Though. Randy be Moss. Able to do third, that. Okay, but say he say after this suspension, he's healthy the rest of the year and he plays all of next season. You think and, he's going to stay healthy the whole year? Well, just listen. Hear me out, real quick. I I think so. I think he could. Because uh, uh, despite the suspension, I think he would have stayed. He was healthy going in, coming into the season, and well, yeah, I expect he didn't him, play the end. Of it. I expect him to be healthy and ready when he comes in week seven. But be better. Li- so just to just that'll to, be a nice boost. just to wind this back this this question this hypothetical real quick. Randy Moss, thirty two years old. Would you sign him? Thirty two years old right now. Would you sign him to a four year, sixty million dollar contract? He'd probably want more money than that. Okay, so, um, so oh, then back to the original. Four-year, $80 so million. Would you, you pay him four-year, $80 million, $20 million no, a year? No, Randy Moss, 32-year-old Randy Moss. You're not giving him a four-year, $20 million a year contract. That's Randy in his prime. That's like that's when he was winning with – I'm pretty sure that's when he was with Tom Brady. I don't know. I don't think I'd do it. You're tripping, dog. That's a lot of money for – there are only so many transcendent wide receivers. Name name another name. Okay, name the top five wide receivers right now. Right now, in your opinion, DeAndre Hopkins. The, oh, what's your... <laughs> Tyreek Hill? There. Okay, that's a good one. Um, Devonte Adams. Okay. What? He's pretty good. Oh yeah, he is. But okay, how old's Deontay Adams then? He's in his thirty. He's older than um. Is he? How old is that? Motherfucking guy? DeAndre Hopkins. Devontae Adams is the same age as DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> They're both twenty nine. But he's older by. I'd two rather months. have Devontae Adams. But no, older. Okay, no, he's way older. So oh, actually, no, DeAndre's older. No, Shit. he's yeah, you're he, right. He's younger. His birthday is on Christmas Hopkins Eve. Hopkins was born in Look June, and Adams was born in Christmas Eve. So okay, you're. <laughs> So we're splitting hairs no, here. I'm not saying I wouldn't. So you just course. don't want to pay wide receivers. No, no, I won't. You don't think wide receivers <laughs> are worth shit? Because you just said, no, I just are. asked you if you would pay Hopkins four years, $20 million, and then I asked you who's the best receiver, and you said DeAndre Hopkins. So you wouldn't pay the best no, receiver you said, in the NFL. No, you said name million. the top five in your opinion, and I did not name them in any specific order. And I also only gave you three names. Even still, is um, Christian Kirk a top five receiver? <laughs> no. Well, what's he getting paid? <laughs> Motherfucker can't even get 1,000 <laughs> yards in a season. <laughs> He should get paid a pack of juicy fruit and <laughs> half smoked cigarette. Well, he's about to enjoy his uh, six and seven season. There's no 500 season anymore now, huh? Because there's 17 weeks. It's 18 weeks. But 17 games because you don't buy a week. Yeah, but there's 18 weeks. Okay. F- fuck you. But, <laughs> but there, nobody will ever go. Fuck you. <laughs> nobody will ever go 500 again, right? Because you'll either seven and six or six and seven. Correct. Yeah, it's odd number of games. That's, fucking stupid they yeah. should just why don't they just make it a 20 week season 
or no, I fucked that up. 19 week season. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, 19 week season, 18 games. You guys want to make money, right? Fuck it. Fuck it. Give them 21 week <laughs> season. <laughs> Tw- 21 no 22 week season 20 games give them two bye weeks let's do it let's fucking go yeah let's fucking go but okay real, real quick let me let's go back um what i was saying i'm just i'm just pissed off that he was hurt most of last year and he's already going to be missing six games this season let alone whatever other injury he gets when he comes back I'm just saying the dude's 29. This is his prime right now. That's true. And he's not available. He's not playing. He's hurting the team. So that's that's all I was complaining about. I'm not. I'd I'd pay him tomorrow. I'd extend him for another four years, five years, whatever. Okay. I'm just saying when he's 33, or and if he's gonna have this type of availability, I don't think it'd be worth it. So then let me let me. I I like what you're saying there. They just traded for his replacement eventually. Oh, definitely. And I want to. I don't want to keep on that to get to get your thoughts on it. Going back, do you believe his statement then? Because he's not available because of the injury, and now he's not available because of something oh, he claims to be I, out of his control. Do you believe him? Well, it's, you're putting it in your body, and then it, when you're at that level of um, sports and you're supposed to be one of the best and you're in the National Football League, I think you should you should know damn well what you're putting inside your body, and you shouldn't just use a trainer or – medical professional as a scapegoat so i i mean i i'm sure he probably didn't think it was a big deal you know what i mean yeah but at the same time it's like you know what you're doing like well and it's hard because it's like if you have a trainer or a dietitian or a chef these are people that you put your trust into and you're paying them to work for you and to do what's in your best interest and and that's what i was kind of trying to say is like maybe it wasn't malicious maybe they this trainer legitimately didn't know whatever vitamin they put in either a contained a banned substance or b they didn't know what it was was a banned substance which is like again is no excuse no it's not. and that's why you pay that's why deandre hopkins if that it, once he if he is able to identify which person in his team made this mistake fires them or at least make sure, hey, you better make damn sure going forward that you check this banned substance list because you just cost me five That's million fucking dollars. Don't you be like, hey, NFL, give me the list of the shit we can't have. Th- oh, hey, you want to be my personal trainer? Here's the list. You don't fuck me and cost me five point two million dollars. Literally. And you, you know, think like- he would have already <laughs> done that, right? You think. And, I just don't get it. And it seems like he's a sharp guy. It seems like D-Hop's a real sharp guy. He's his own agent. Yeah, like I'm you pretty, said, he I'm negotiated. sure he is. I think he, unless I made that up. No, it sounds familiar. No, I think you're right. But yeah, check that out. Um, because and, and checking it, it out. Chris. And if he doesn't have a publicist, Cody's fact checking this right now. Um, if he doesn't have a an agent or a publicist, and he wrote that state, like I'm not I'm not doubting that DeAndre Hopkins is a smart guy. Um, but it just it's really curious then if he's such a smart guy how this happened. And okay. It, and it sounds like he's confused about it. So there's a lot of questions, but I don't think we're going to get any answers. It's just going to be six games without D-Hop. Okay, so he um he fired his agent in 2020, and he negotiated his deal with the Cardinals, just him. He represented himself. And what did that contract end up looking like? Um, Hold on. <clears throat> Let's see how. Guess I could look that up too. I'm on the wrong. D Hop contract. Um, oh, I got it. Name. Hopkins and the Cardinals agreed to have a two-year contract extension. It is worth fifty-four point five million dollars. It also includes forty-two point seven five million in guarantees, and is twenty-seven point two five million salary is the highest in the league history for a non-quarterback. Oh, so granted, go. that was so he got a record-breaking deal. Is this the first year of that contract then, technically, or is this now the second? Well, no, that was just an extension. An extension. His, uh, I don't know. I don't have the whole thing spelled out in front of me. All right, let me look it up then. DeAndre Hopkins contract. Because either way, um, it sounds he got traded in 2019. It sounds like he's already making the kind of money we were talking about. So we're just talking about continuing to pay him that kind of money. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm all aboard. And well, okay. So here, yeah, that works out perfect. He's going to be paid until he's 32. Look at that cap hit next year, though. Oh man, where's that? Uh, next 30 year's million. 30 million. Holy shit. Oh, that's his most. Expensive. Well, when they traded for him 
hell of a job by Steve Kime of 2020. He only counted seven million towards the cap. Yeah, well, because he came in mid. Whoa, well, did he come in mid season? No, he came in before the season. Before right? the season, yeah. Wow, so he's already played two full seasons with us. Yep, that's crazy. Um, and then this will be 2022 season, 17 million, 17 point nine. So basically, 18 million. Um, and then almost 31 million next year when he's 31. Um, so yeah, he'll be. 30 so we, yeah, we have him year, locked up 31, through 2024. So going into the 2025 season, he's going to be 33 years old, and you want to pay so, him 20 million a year. <laughs> well, I mean, you just paid him 50, 56 million in two years. Well, yeah, that. but I'm saying at 33, if he wants to stay, that's the Larry Larry Fitz 11 mil. Just you know, come back, see how it goes. Here's 11 mil. But. Uh, I think that would make sense back in the day, but now it's 2022 and the cap is what it is out of control. Yeah, it's only going to go get higher too, but I'm saying he's going to be 33 years old going into the 2025 season. So how old was Larry when he started taking his $11 million sweetheart deals? <laughs> sweetheart deals. He must have been like 35. Oh, of course, this website doesn't go back. Oh, no, he did that for oh, does. three years or something? So oh, Okay, yeah. so here it is. Uh, 20, 2019... 2018, 2019, 2017, 2018. And then you got the two years, 22. It's the same thing. Yeah, same thing. So his last big contract was seven years, 113 million from 2011 <laughs> to 2018. Um, shit. So we got to do some quick math here. Good so for him. in 2015, when he signed that deal, how old? How old was Larry Fitzgerald in 2015? We need the Jeopardy music because he's currently. 38 years old in 2022 so i think the light's on in your closet no there's just a window there oh four years ago um should sure? oh no that was six years ago so six years ago he was 32 so he started okay so yeah so he was 32. he started making oh, taking his 11 million dollar deals when at he 32. was 32 okay maybe you're right well i guess we'll see what happens yeah. i just want him to fucking play the game just play the game but I mean, stop doing drugs. But and again, like I think it's important to note though, like twenty million could be the new eleven million with the cap. You know, that's true. Um, yeah. Maybe and and by the t especially by the time we get down the road there to where it's um, when does his contract? When does he become an unrestricted free agent? We just saw that um, twenty twenty five. Twenty twenty five. Yeah. So three years from now, uh, yeah, twenty million will be the new eleven million. Probably. So, I mean, <laughs> at least he's not. Getting happy endings and at the massage parlor. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Um, it's better to not get a Trevor Bauer two year <laughs> suspension or a Deshaun Watson one year suspension. Or is he still suspended to start this season? No. Or they haven't said anything yet. Because he wasn't even. Yet. Oh, that's right. He wasn't even technically suspended. They just the Texans just didn't play him, right? Yes. The NFL was like, "Hey, we don't want." Because he had all these accusations and course we all know he's not criminally charged or anything but yeah. um i think they put him on damn that was a while ago i don't remember did they put him on the exempt list or um the commissioner whatever that stupid oh, list is i don't because there was a pending and then he also requested a trade and said he wouldn't play for the texans right that's a good question because I don't remember him ever officially being suspended or anything. Yeah, because he I wasn't be disciplined wrong. by the NFL. Um, let's see. Going to the most reliable source on the internet, Wikipedia. Yeah, hey, I, like, I like Wikipedia. Um, so the 2020... What was it? Chandler Catanzaro. On April 28, 2020, <laughs> the Texans exercised the fifth-year option on Watson's contract on September 5th. Watson signed a four-year, $177.5 million contract extension with $11 million in guarantees, keeping him under the contract through 2025 season. Um, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. 2021. And then, so 2021, following the 2020 season, Watson requested a trade by the Texans after coming disgruntled uh, with changes in the front office and the coaching staff. Do you want to take that away, Cody? What? Oh, you want to no, read that? No, you got it. Oh, the Texans were <laughs> not willing to negotiate with other teams regarding the trade offers, um, leading to a standout Watson until the emergence of sexual harassment allegations. Um, um, he did participate in OTAs. Okay. Okay, so he did OTAs, went Training to camp. camp. Watson named the Texans 53-man roster season along with Tyrod Taylor and Davis Mills. 
Um, despite not being okay. officially suspended or yep. placed on any reserve list, Watson was ruled out of every Texans game played in 2021 for non-injury related He's matter. being a little personal bitch. matter. Was he being a little bitch or were the Texans well, being a little I remember bitches? they hired um, the GM they hired. He was really pissed off about. I remember that coming through. Um, but other than that, yeah, I don't know. I guess he, it just, just, he just wanted to leave and said, I'm not playing. Yeah. I mean, it could have been like, could have been mutual. They're like, hey, we don't want you and your allegations on the field. And he's like, oh, that's fine. I don't want you yeah, and your bad, shitty organization. Look. Yeah. So it was like a mutual. Talk about a shitty organization. Yeah. Fuck the Texans, man. Let's find out who their next good player is going to be. And uh, Steve Kine will, will trade for him for a third round pick. <laughs> Oh, actually, you know, I we should like the Texans. They did take shit, shitty David, David Johnson, Johnson away from us and gave us DeAndre <laughs> Hopkins. Yeah, um, probably the most lopsided trade deal of all time. It was, was and a third round pick. And, that was it. Yeah. and then we got JJ Watt from him too. That was incredible. Oh no, actually, it was a second round pick and a fourth round swap. So we got their fourth round pick and they got our fourth round pick. Yeah, <laughs> this uh, article says. The DeAndre Hopkins trade was the worst NFL trade of this millennium. <laughs> I think that's an understatement. And then it goes on to describe uh, David Johnson. And it goes, David Johnson was terrible. <laughs> was, was terrible the, is terrible. That was the first sentence. Oh, man. My goodness. But um, so I want to talk about the... So we don't know the schedule yet. And that could be something interesting to break down. Because I, th- I think it'll be out by the time... We have our June episode where Mike comes back in here and we can talk about, we will actually know what the six games without DeAndre Hopkins are going to look like, but we know who our opponents are. So me and Cody are going to look, we're, gonna, we're all going to look, take a look at these lists of the opponents that Cardinals have coming up in the 2022-2023 season. And Cody, uh, we see our home games here listed, uh, Kansas City Chiefs, Los Angeles Chargers, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, New Orleans Saints, Philadelphia Eagles, New England Patriots, Los Angeles Rams, San Francisco 49ers, and the Seattle Seahawks. Um, we'll go we'll go home and away here. Out of these uh six six, seven. Nine. You just want to go down and do you want to predict uh wins and losses? I want to do we can do that. Yeah, let's do that next. You got, but a, you got a piece of paper? <laughs> I do. I, so I'll give you that. But before we before we um just at a glance here real quick before we do, we can try and uh, guess wins and losses because I think that'd be interesting too. Uh I want to ask you out of these teams, which which one which team or maybe top 3 would you least like to play during the DeAndre Hopkins suspension? Um. Here, go down to the. Oh, you just talked just home. home, just the oh, home just games home. right now. Okay, just the games at home. So assume that maybe we'll so play we three four. home and three road. Yeah, yeah, say we'll play maybe three games. So top three teams. Which top three teams from the home games do you not want to play during the DeAndre Hopkins suspension? The Rams, the Chiefs, probably Buccaneers. Yeah, those are probably the three. Yeah, I think that's safe because that's. Those are obviously the top three teams. I think it could be tough. The Saints still have a pretty good defense, don't they? Not bad. They were historically bad, <laughs> what, three years ago? Yeah, yeah, they're pretty bad. So then I guess we can quickly um, look at the road teams. Atlanta Falcons, Carolina Panthers, Las Vegas Raiders, Denver Broncos, Minnesota Vikings, Los Angeles Rams away. Um, San Francisco 49ers and uh, the Seattle Seahawks. Obviously, we're going to play all the division opponents. Rams again. Home and away. Rams. <laughs> yep. Don't want to play Rams in LA either. Rams, Broncos, Raiders. That's my three. Yeah. Even though we lost to the Panthers last year, you're you're not worried about them? No, no, no. Raiders got a lot better. Broncos got a lot better. Those are going to be tough games, especially on the road. Yeah, I, I have I have to agree. And so looking looking at the Cardinals roster with DeAndre Hopkins suspended um in the depth chart, we're gonna roll out Marquise Brown and AJ Green. Dude, imagine if they didn't pull that trade on draft day. Man, it, it just makes it that much well, bigger. The right? Cardinals have known about this for well before the draft, so it, may, it, it makes, makes you sense, think right? that they did that trade because they knew they were gonna ha- not have Hopkins for six games. Uh huh. Right. But dude, if they didn't do that, oh my god. 
it'd be uh, it'd be looking pretty rough. It'd be rough because it looks like Rondale Moore is going to be wide receiver three. Yeah, thank God they got Trey McBride though. True, true. But I mean, are they going to ro- how many t- uh, two tight end sets do they have? Twelve personnel, based in audience. <laughs> okay, Ron. Um, uh, no, we have. A, it's, it's a, we'll probably see it a lot. I think we have a fair amount of depth at the receiver position. I mean, well, we have Ertz is basically a receiver, so. True, and you said from what you said last episode, Trey McBride is uh, receiving and blocking and tight blocking. end. Yeah, so he's, he'll bring both assets. I mean, he's, both he was facets. the best tight end in the in the draft. Okay, but like, he, so it it it's stupid that they wasted their second round pick on him. But if he turns out to be Travis Kelsey, no one's going to complain. <laughs> yeah, and so I guess since we're talking, looking at the depth chart here, and talking about the wide receiver position with. DeAndre Hopkins slated to miss these first six games. Should the Cardinals look to bolster the wide receiver position and sign a guy like Des Bryant? Des Bryant. 33 year old Des Bryant? Yeah. Yeah. He'll be cheap, too. Because then you're looking at your top three wide receivers being Marquise Brown, AJ Green, and Dak. I'm sorry, what? Were you going to say Dak? I was going to say Dak. <laughs> Des Bryant. Jesus Des Christ. Bryant. Fuck. No, he'll, he'll be fourth. He won't pass. They won't uh, start him over Rondale Moore, that's for sure. So Rondale Moore is that good that he would start over Des Bryant? I would hope so. I guess, it, yeah, I guess that's that's fair depending on um, how they physically, need, they how, somebody, how prepared though. he is. How, how, yeah, but they have. Um, how game ready Des is. Yep, they have that the Antoine Wesley kid. Remember him last year? No, I don't. You remember him, the tall guy? Um, he caught a couple touchdown passes. He's got all the tattoos. Looks like Michael Floyd. The Cardinals have him? He's not yeah. on the depth chart here, is he? Yeah, he's right there. Wesley. Oh, Wesley. Okay, when, gotcha, uh, gotcha, gotcha. When Hopkins was out last year. Okay. So you, yeah. so then do you... Yeah, he, he wasn't bad. He, was, he played some good ball. Well, there you go then. So if we're going to count on these younger guys... Is the, are you saying it is worth signing a guy like Des Bryant and having him be in the second set, or is, is it just a waste of time? Do you at least bring him in to see if he? I bring him in. I bring him in for a workout. I'd give him the veteran minimum, which was at one, one point six five or something. Whatever, he's going to cost you under two million dollars. I'd say for one season. Why not bring him in? Yeah, I I, it's, I don't it's see it's good why leadership because think about. I mean, well, you got AJ Green, but he's kind of your uh, your veteran leader in that wide receiver room. But why not bring in Des for if it's a, especially if it's a one year deal or even a cheap two year deal? Like, yeah, pull up his quote of him saying that the team he'd want to play for is the Arizona Cardinals. I yeah, because you you told me that yeah. um, when we were prepping for the show. Because he's like DeAndre Hopkins is my boy. I love Kyler Murray. So Yahoo uh, Yahoo article here, no harm in Cardinals potentially adding wide receiver Des Bryant to offseason roster. The Cardinals find themselves in a tough situation at wide receiver this offseason after DeAndre Hopkins was hit with a six-game suspension for PED use. We think they have the wide receiver room to weather the first six-game six season, games but that doesn't mean they can't look for other options. Uh, so other options is former Dallas Cowboys wide receiver, De- Des Bryant. He's played since, He hasn't played since 2020 and has only appeared in six games since 2017 but he has made it known that he would like to play for the cardinals he said it to tmz sports and also was a guest of i am an athlete tonight show on sirius xm radio host ledger was that (laughs) no idea jesus oh pac-man jones oh (laughs) pac-man jones and brandon marshall Marshall. yeah i man i I thought i said which which brandon marshall aren't there two brandon marshalls (laughs) stop it there's more than one Brandon Marshall. Am he I wrong? suffers from personality disorder. <laughs> Leave him alone. Oh, so he is. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. Okay, never mind. Drop no, he actually up. does though. I know you're right. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, this isn't the. Sorry, Brandon. Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo says this isn't the first time he would like to play in Arizona, as he did in 2021 as well. Um, so does Bryant really wants to be a Cardinal, um, and he's made it known on multiple occasions. Where's his quote though? They don't have it on there? Uh, oh, whatever. Same age as Green. Same age okay. as AJ Green. Let's see. Let's see. Um, this is actually on Arizona Cardinals. Is this on their website? Did they post this on their own website? I guess. Oh, yeah. This is the one I read where they, um, yeah, Arizona they're Cardinals. going with Odell 
because he was courtside at the Suns game in Phoenix. Oh, wearing, is, wearing the Booker shirt. Oh my God, he looks like an idiot. Is Odell still a free agent? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just asking you if Odell is still a free agent or yeah, not. Yeah, I think he is. Cool. Do you see this though? Do you see that Odell's wearing the Suns jersey? Yeah, yeah, I see that. <laughs> right here is the Valley. Don't make me say it. Who is that? Who is that? I don't know. What does it say right here? Odell Beckham and this and what? Oh no, it just says center. <laughs> just center. I don't know. She's um, got nasty hair. So yeah. Uh, Odell's with a female here and also with I don't know if he's with this guy or if this guy's just photo bombing on the right um, but anyway this article is this our whole article just a picture of Elda oh no I scroll down um, it was oh it was again just talking about the series XM um, yeah, he's a free agent it he said it's not with confidence Kyler Murray's swag and confidence it's not to be the Des Bryant I was I when I got in the first NFL Okay, it's not to be the Des Bryant I was when I first got in the NFL. It's morose. More so. Oh, it's more so. <laughs> Jesus, I can't see that far. <laughs> Help guys facilitate morose. an example of how to work hard. Morose. <laughs> So he he doesn't want to come in and be the top guy. He just wants to come in and help people out, which and is that's great. Good. So that's good. That's good. I got in. a guy that wants to play a role. And he's he's made money. He just wants to be on a team and he wants to win. So why not bring him in? Yeah. No, I don't think there's. Any I problem I don't with. think it would hurt. I mean, he's recognized that you know, he, or he's admitting that he's not the best, and he's 33 years old, and and so he's not going to be a distraction. I don't think. And a guy like a guy like. Des Bryant would probably be cheaper than Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, yeah. Odell's would be like, I just won the Super Bowl, and I was awesome, even though I got hurt in that game. But, yeah, yeah. he's he'd want probably, probably want eight, nine, ten million a year. I don't know. I, I, I know it's the new age, and, like, the since athletes are making so much, they're becoming celebrities in their own right. And doing, and especially more so with the internet age, they're doing more stuff to build their personal brand like Kyler Murray. Um, but I just think that it could be a dangerous game to bring in a guy like Odell Beckham Jr. who needs to be the center of attention <laughs> yeah. into a town. Like Devin Booker is a big, humble personality. I'm not going to drag him into this, but Kyler Murray is also don't, don't as, like as quiet as he is. Kyler Murray does a lot of stuff to build his personal brand off the field. I've mentioned it. He's doing Twitch streams a lot or he had been, I don't know if he still does. Um, it's just I don't want to bring any distractions away from the game because I'm a big believer in you know working hard, doing it right, and we got good guys in the valley right now. As far as I can see, like DeAndre Hopkins, aside from the suspension, he's pretty. He's kind of seems like a head down, work hard kind of guy. Um, Booker, Chris Paul, they're even still that in DeAndre, and so all the main valley sports guys have that mentality. And so if you bring in a guy like Odell Beckham Jr. I'm not saying he doesn't work I, hard because he is good. I but don't like, see him fitting in. I don't think he fits in because yeah. Booker can Booker can chum it up. That's what I love about Devin Booker is he can chum it up with all these celebrities, date Kendall Jenner, but then he's a quiet, humble guy. So it's like not he, he knows court. he knows when to. <laughs> well, I mean, he's a shit talker for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, You're yeah. right. So he, not in that regard, he's definitely a shit talker. But he like he does let his game do the talking at the same time. Like yeah, he talks. He talks. If he's gonna talk the talk, he's walking the he's walk. He's walking the walk, baby. Most of the nine times out of ten. But, but the other thing that is kind of intriguing about Odell is he had a good season last year. That's true. That's and true. He he contributed a lot. Right and and like a lot more than AJ Green. Like if he if they signed him, he. Oh, but man, so when you have Hopkins, Brown, Odell, that's just ridiculous. Absolutely no, and that's that would be incredible. But how many alpha? I don't want to say alpha, but how many? No, I, I know what you're how many I, number one receivers can you have? Yeah. At, at one position, him and him and There's Hopkins, so I just don't go around. Them. I don't see the mixing, especially with the quarterback like Kyler, yeah. who if he doesn't have a good clear option, he's going to put it on the ground oh, and totally. run it himself. Yeah, because the Rams locker room, like you put him in the locker room with uh, Cooper, Cooper Cup. Cup, it's like okay, Cooper Cup like, and Rob Rob Woods, right? Yeah, so well, he was hurt. True. Um, the one kid, the Vance Jefferson or whatever, Van, yeah, Van the, Jefferson. His dad is uh, the Cardinals receiver coach. 
Oh, really? Yeah. That's Remember when he scored that 65-yard touchdown last year against the Cardinals? Mm-hmm. And they showed his dad on the sideline, like, pissed off. Like, <laughs> fucking, he's like, dude, your son just scored, like, a 65-yard touchdown, Fuck man. Him. Yeah, he's all pissed. Not my son today. Uh, but, like, I can see that. him, how Odell fits into that locker room because it's Cooper Cuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he he's not that. I, he, he doesn't look for greatness. Greatness just comes... True, naturally to him because he's he was the best receiver in the in the game last year. Yeah, but you were so you were saying that um, and we just saw in the article that we look, were peeking at. We can only afford one diva, and that's, well, that's already DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> well, there you go. So it sounds like I know what you're going to say then here, but I wanted to say, Des Bryant's a guy who's ready to take a backseat role, not start, yep. come in that's exactly with what the they second need. unit. They don't need him and to start. be a mentor. Versus if you sign a guy like Odell, he's going to want to be. Number two, so he's going to bump AJ Green down to the number three receiver. That's okay with me. <laughs> um, okay with me for sure. Yeah, for sure. They, then, they'll never do it. But though. then listen. But then Hopkins yeah, comes back. It. So it would be Hopkins first, Beckham second, and Marquise third probably. And would well, or would Beck? Would you have to Beckham, still keep Beckham in? The, I bump Beckham down to third. I'd stick. No, Beckham would be in the slot. There's no way. Or maybe you could stick Hollywood in the slot. I you don't would, know. You would have to bring... Because if you're Steve Kime negotiating with Odell, you'd have to make that pretty clear, right? Like, hey, our intention is for the first six games, you'll be the number two guy um, or the number one guy, potentially. But then once Hopkins comes back, we're going to put you at three. Well, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see Hollywood on, on the edge all year. And well, then Hopkins is going to well, be on the outside, and Beckham, too. And so. Beck, Beckham's still rehabbing from an, that injury, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I heard his knee. So he might not even be available. I heard his knee. He probably isn't even available in the time frame that Hopkins is. So oh. this might be a conversation that was totally pointless. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I forgot. Oh, I, even though I said earlier he got hurt in the Super Bowl. You did. Yeah. Well, let me see if we can find this. Oh, no. Yeah, it was this injury. Beckham. It was a knee. Um, oh, he tore his ACL. Okay, so yeah, he might not even play this year. He sits over a month removed from the injury. Okay, but here's an article. Here's an article on NFL.com about landing spots for Odell Beckham Jr. Is it an article or is it a video? Damn, yeah, that's right. Okay, I forgot he tore his, his shit. That's bad. That's a video. Yeah, so torn ACL, so he might not even be ready for the start of the season. Hmm. Uh, anyway, why are we talking about that bum? Let's forget about him. Just forget about him. Forget about him. Al Horford did not send it to overtime. I'm pissed. No, yeah, the the <laughs> Bucks Celtics game just ended dramatically. I lost my bet. Um, it was 100 to 103 was the final score, and that was fine. No, no, it was 101 to 103 was the final score. Yeah, because what had happened was it was 100 to 103, and Drew Holiday went to the line. Marcus Smart. Just kidding. Marcus Smart went to the line, and he made the first free throw. Um, it was a questionable. He was kind of taking a crazy three-point attempt sideways, and he got hit. Um, oh, by Drew Holiday. There you go. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense, because, yeah, Boston was shooting the free throw. So, anyway, Marcus Smart's at the line, makes the first free throw, throws the second free throw off the rim, um, and gets it back, gets the rebound, takes he a fadeaway. Almost made right it, Right under too. the basket. Almost, almost made it. Almost made it. It was um, perfect. So, someone comes up with the rebound, puts it up, misses. Um, times like literally there's like 0.4 seconds left. Al Horford gets it in his hand with 0.1 seconds left, but can't get the release off quick enough. Uh, he makes the basket, but it's not in time. And so the Bucks win uh, 103 to 101. And Cody loses. And Cody loses I his needed bet. Tatum to get two assists and Grant, what was his name? Grant Williams to get one point. That could have happened in overtime. What the hell? That's the way I lost. Yeah. It's okay though. It happens, man. It happens. Um, you win some, you lose most, and uh, you know, that's just the way it is. You, you lose ninety nine percent of them. <laughs> it's fucking rigged. So let's look at the Cardinals' schedule um, or pseudo schedule once again. I mean, the opponents we're gonna play. We don't know the dates, but we know home and away. So, Cody, with the time we have left here today, um, and we might we might have another topic. We'll see. But let's let's go through this, and uh, I want to hear your take on what you think if it's going to be a win or a loss uh, against these opponents at at the given venue. So we'll we'll dive into the home games first. Um, at home against the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes and Tyree Kill. What do you? I think we lose that one. 
Yeah, I think that's likely to be a loss. Let's, I mean, let's pray that's not one where we do not have DeAndre Hopkins. It would really help to have because <laughs> I think we yeah I think we lose that game even if we have Hopkins. Um, that's my yeah. take. That I think one. I think the Chiefs have a good defense. I don't think they have a crazy defense, but it's always a shootout. It's and going you have up to keep Patrick up with Holmes. their offense and. So what did we give? Are you keeping track? Yeah, I'm gonna keep track over here. Right, so. You gave him, gave him the L. You so agree? I, I think I'm gonna agree. I think that could okay. could potentially be an L. Well, I don't want to say playing it safe, but being maybe a pessimist, um, I think it's gonna be an L. And then the next home game we have in uh, this, these all these games are obviously in no particular order. But next on this list um, on ArizonaCardinals.com, the Los Angeles Chargers and uh, Justin Herbert. Oh man, that one's tough. I mean, that's I could home. easily say another L, but <sighs> right? Do you give them? Know. Do you do we pessimistically give them a loss, or do we optimistically say it might be a close game, but the Cardinals will pull it out? Who they just? Oh, they just got Khalil Mack. That's right. Oh, that's and then dangerous. they signed J.C. Jackson, the cornerback in free agency. Um, so they they're a really good football team. Uh oh, man. Um, I'll give him some credit, and I'll say we have Hopkins for that one. I'll give him a W at home. I think they can pull it off. All right. So then, let, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll distinguish this then because I think I'm gonna give him an L. So okay. I'll, we'll distinguish. We'll we'll distinguish it. I'll let me write. All right. So you went two L. I'll keep my tr- my score here. Okay. I'm one and one right now. You're oh <laughs> two, you bastard. Yep. Yep. Okay. I like it. Oh and two. So you'll keep track on your side. Um, and I'll keep track on this side. So then, Tampa loss. I think we lose. Right to the Bucks at home. At home, Cardinals. So the Bucks last season, when you look at their, they didn't. They weren't crazy. They won game. They got. They got good at towards the end of the season, but they were losing some games, and they were in a lot of close games. I don't think they're as formidable as they seem. And Tom Brady, so you, I know. So you think they're going to win? Hmm. The Cardinals. Yeah, yeah, I think the okay. Cardinals win this one. All right, so <laughs> all right, so we're both one and two, but you okay, have, okay. And so you're taking the L. okay Saints. I W. Yeah, we should beat the Saints. Saints are a W. We should be, that might be a close one, but I think we should beat the Saints. Eagles. What do you think? The Philadelphia Eagles and they just got AJ Brown. They got so Jalen Hurts is their starting quarterback. They just got AJ Brown. They got a pretty decent offense. I don't know much about their defense. I'm going to go W. I'm thinking W. W against the Eagles. Yeah, we win that game. Uh, Patriots, another W. Sorry, Bill. So the Patriots, uh, Mac Jones is coming back at quarterback. They were surprised a lot of t- people last year, but I think ultimately, dep- I don't even think it depends on if DeAndre defense, Hopkins though. is back or not. No, I, think, I think we win. I think that's a win. Yeah. That should be a win. We should win that one. Mm-hmm. Oh, next is your favorite team. Loss. I don't think we're going to beat them. What's your favorite team? Oh, the LA Rams? Yeah. yeah. So uh, the Los Angeles Rams yeah. at home. I, I took the L. The defending Super Bowl champions. Yeah, I'm going to do a pessimistic L. I hope that we have a team that competes. We'll I hope this team them. fights. I hope um, we're going to play the Rams twice. We're going to play them in LA. We're going to play them here. Um, hopefully we have DeAndre Hopkins for at least one of those games. Yeah. Oh, I should. I think we split it like we did last year, but I picked. So we'll lose at home and then we'll win in LA. That's what we did last year. Sure. Then save it for then when we do the well, away team. Technically, we also lost uh, to them on the road. So you're, you're in the be, playoffs, it'll be your pessimistic L at home and then sure. an optimistic win it in LA. All right, let's do that. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, we'll save that for San down Francisco Forty ers they're going to win. The Niners, that should be a win. Because are they yeah. going to roll out Trey Lance or Garoppolo? I think they're going to have to. And there's no uh, there's no guarantee that Garoppolo is even healthy for the start of the season. So it's Trey Lance oh, coming out. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Seattle, W. Seattle. Yeah, on the last episode of the Heat Check podcast, Mike Benjamin said that he wants to go to this game, this Seahawks game at home. Did he say that? It's, yeah, he did. Because it's the first game without Russell Wilson that they're going to – be coming into the valley and we should yeah i'm gonna put down a win for this one we should win this one i don't that was the last game we went to who's their quarterback Seattle. who who's C- uh, seattle's quarterback Gino right now? smith Gino smith oh. i don't know hopefully they get baker Mayfield. serviceable but nothing special yeah for their own sake all right so through the home games what are we what are we looking at i have six and here? three what do you have let me see 
I have six and three. Yeah, but you picked them beating the Bucks. We agreed a lot towards the end. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was just the Chargers, <laughs> Bucks. Okay, so then we get to the road games. Um, I think I don't know if it's alphabetical order or what they did with this list, but um, Atlanta Falcons <laughs> win. Win, yeah. Who do they got? They got rid of Matt Ryan. Um, oh, they got rid of Matt Ryan. Where's Matty Ice? He's with the Colts. Oh, yeah, that's right. That? Come on. Big switch up. Um, they drafted that Riddler kid from Cincinnati. I think is that the college you went to? Um, Calvin Ridley. No, he's a uh, he's suspended for the whole year, right? No. Yeah, he bet he bet on the games. Oh, Marcus Mariota is the Atlanta Falcons. Mariota, yeah. Desmond Rid- Ritter. I said Desmond Riddler. Rid- Riddler. The Riddler. The Riddler. Where is he from? Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Doesn't yeah. matter. Third round pick. Um, <laughs> I don't think he's going to be any easy. I mean, maybe he'll be a serviceable backup. He's like their uh, Ryan Lindley. He was the second quarterback taken in the entire draft. This year? Yeah. Malik Willis went after him. Oh, geez. Yeah. Anyway, so Marcus Mariota and the Falcons with Cordero Patterson. That's a throwback name. Um, Drake London. Yeah, I think we'll be. <laughs> He's listed as a running back. That's I funny. think I think we'll be all right here. Yeah. So that's a W. So we got seven and three. That's perfect. Carolina Panthers. Yes. Fuck them. They're gonna they're gonna win that game. Uh, I'm I'm gonna do. Why it do we always yeah. play the Panthers? I. <laughs> I'd hate to agree with you, but um, yeah, optimistic dub here. I think we need redemption for last year when we let Cam Newton come off the streets and that was beat his us. first game too. He literally went from um, in the for the Panthers. He went from the fashion show to the he had two play- <laughs> the fashion show. to the game and <laughs> he had beat two, us. two plays and two touchdowns. I think. Yeah, because he just did like the QB run. It was like a designed run or some shit. Just ran it right in. We watched that stupid game at Cold Beers and We can't watch any more no, Valley Sports at Cold Beers to. and Cheeseburgers. I'm sorry. I like I like the food. I like the beer. They do what they do. But I don't like did, the trivia. We did watch that. Yeah, fuck the trivia. We did watch that Cardinals game uh, when they beat the shit out of the Rams. Yeah. Dude, towards the real, end of the season. Just real quick. Did real quick, guys. Um, the Heat Check podcast host, the three of us, we did a few nights of trivia at Cold Beers and Cheeseburgers. Lots of cheating. And it's, they do the, like, from your cell phone, the Jackbox trivia. And, like, let us know. If you're watching on YouTube or wherever, you can comment. Let us know. What do you think about trivia that's done virtually like that versus where you get, like, a whiteboard or something that you have to hold up your answer or submit your answer on, like, a paper? Um because I just feel like these motherfuckers are cheating. Like, they're like, oh, I'm putting in the answer on my phone. But secretly, they're, like, Googling the answer. And especially with this the virtual, they give you, like, 60 seconds or 90 seconds to answer each question. And the host has the seconds. discretion to hold the answer. And oh, the host has discretion to that, award points at the end that was for malfunctions. Because the Wi-Fi is fucking dog ass. shit at cold beers and cheeseburgers. Oh the Wi-Fi is Pollution. worse than if you were in the Alaskan fucking Absolute. wilderness. You might as well have a fucking potato plugged into your laptop if you're trying to do anything. It's, ooh, I just, I just hit a nerve. I hit my own nerve here with that one. But, um, yeah. So disclaimer: don't do cold, don't do trivia at cold beers and cheeseburgers, and don't watch a Valley Sports game at cold beers and cheeseburgers. They always lose because they're always gonna lose. Don't do it. Bad news bears. Um, sorry, I got off topic there because we were talking about the Panthers. Um, the last game we saw them play against the Cardinals, yeah, that was bad. a shit I, show. I brought up, cool um, but we're yeah, no, it's all good. But we we wrote in an optimistic uh, uh, W there. Um, so then the next game on this uh, list, in no particular order, the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, I'm gonna go W because we're gonna be there. I I hope it's at a time of the year where we can. Because I when we were on a break, I literally said to Cody, we should try and go to this game. And Michael, you're coming with us, buddy. You bet that ass, Michael. You bet you, you bet. It might be Cody's bachelor party. <laughs> yes, that too. We'll live stream it. Yes. Put it on the Facebook. That too. And the YouTube. Anyway, um, no, yeah. So they got Derek Carr. They got their core. Um, a little lot of turmoil for that team last year. Um, they just fired the got president. Fired. They fired the president. Yeah, again? like last week, and he came out and is the weird guy said, uh, Al Davis Jr. still the owner? Yeah, he is. He's not going uh, Well, because the president came out and reported some misconduct or something to female employees uh, in the organization. And, and yeah. the president, I don't remember his name. It was something weird with a V. Um, but he reported it to the NFL. And then he came out, I think it was yesterday or the day before he came out and said he got fired 
because of retaliation from Al Davis. Mark is Al Davis. Mark oh, Mark Davis. Davis. You're Mark right. Davis, Al Davis right? was his was father. His I think. Yeah, yeah, Mark Davis. Okay. You're right. You're that right. Thank you. Right. But you did say Al Davis. I said Jr. Al Davis Jr., which might not <laughs> even exist. <laughs> yeah. Fact tech. Yeah. So they, they're always there's always some fucked up stuff going on with them. Yeah, the Raiders are sketchy, so that's what I think. It's an unstable environment. So I mean, the players last year on that team did a good job of sticking to the game and impressively won some after the controversy. Yeah, with they the just interim got Devontae coach. Adams, man. and they just got Devontae Adams. So <sighs> they're gonna be good. We're giving him an optimistic, uh, the Cardinals an optimistic W, and yep. even potentially only without because DeAndre we're gonna Hopkins. be there, and, and it's because we're gonna be oh, there. Oh, we're gonna get our ass kicked by us, no us physically at by Raiders fans. Yeah, maybe it's possible. <laughs> but the, I mean, Vegas is so close. There might be a lot of other Cardinals fans that have the same idea as True. us. Maybe some other Heat Check podcast listeners might also join us. We'll make it a Valley Sports Plug experience and offer nothing but our presence. <laughs> and you can nothing. come drink at the bar with us. You can come, you can play come pregame with, with us. us. Come play roulette with us. Um, so then going down this list uh, after that. Yeah, again, we don't know what the dates are for these games or if this is even the order of them. It's likely not. Go but well. uh, the Denver Broncos in Denver with Russell Wilson. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have to agree. I have to agree that I think this could be a loss. Um, but I also think it has the potential to be a close game because they don't have um, Von Miller anymore. Their defense is not what it has been in the past. Uh, their offense outside of Russell Wilson, their top receiver great. is um, what's that kid's name? Um, oh, Cortland Sutton. Yes, I like that guy. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's pretty good. But they traded their uh, their good tight end Noah Fant. To yeah, him. Noah Fant. To oh, he's gone. Okay, yeah, he's um, gone. At running back, what they got? Philip Lindsay and Melvin they don't Gordon. Have, they don't have Lindsay anymore. They have Melvin Gordon. They have Gordon. Yeah. So not too, not that impressive. I might be forgetting about a receiver or two, um, but I don't think anyone. Obviously, since they're not standing out, it's not a game changer. I'm still gonna go L. I mean, I I'm gonna go against you then because I'm gonna say W. We should probably trade that. I'm gonna say W. <laughs> we'll probably lose to the Raiders and beat the Broncos, but it's okay. I'll stick with what I what I said. You're gonna go W, and okay. I might I might agree with that that it's possible that we could lose to the Raiders, yeah. but I'll keep my optimistic win against the Raiders, and I'll put my. I'm not even going to call it pessimistic. I think it's just going to be. I think it's going to be a dub against Denver right. Vikings. Minnesota w. Vikings in Minnesota. Um, Kirk Cousins is still the man. Yeah. No, we win that game. We we'll have to win. I hope uh, that should be a win. I hope Patrick Peterson breaks his leg. True revenge game. Um, Adam Thielen is unreliable. He'll probably be injured depending on what point in the season we play them. It's a was it Justin Jefferson? Justin he's Jefferson. Stuck. He's a beast. But yeah. I mean, with Kirk Cousins throwing you the ball, Dalvin Cook. you never know. Dalvin uh, Cook. I think we... Ah, that's true. They do have some pieces. Yeah, but Cooks made a glass. That's true. Exactly. Exactly. You never know. This. I mean, no NFL player, no modern athlete seems to be able to stay healthy and tough out an injury, whether that's their decision or the trainer or the organization. But if a player's even remotely injured, uh, as long as it's, I mean, the Vikings aren't a playoff team or not a playoff. Maybe not. Maybe a playoff team, but they're not a Super Bowl team. I don't think they're a playoff team even. Anyway. No. So then, obviously, like we said, got to play the Rams in L.A. Uh, that's going to be, you said it's going to be a dub, right? Oh, it's hard. Because we're going to one and one, right? Looking th that I have them 10 and four right now, and I'm like, there's no way. Um, they have a tough schedule. <sighs> Granted, we don't know the schedule. I mean, the opponents are. I think we're going to lose to the Rams twice. Twice? I'm, I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to give them, I'm going to go that they split. They split the year with them. All right. So uh, according to us going through this list at a first glance, you have them losing to L.A. in Glendale and then beating L.A. in L.A. Correct. Perfect. So then the next on this list, the San Francisco 49ers. They're going to split in with them San as well. Francisco. I think we lose one to them. Really? Yeah. Okay. So you would have them losing this one in San Francisco. Correct. I'm going to have them winning this. I'm going to have them winning both. Okay. I'm at eleven and five. I I I say we uh we sweep Seattle and we split with the Rams and the Niners. Yeah, sweep Seattle. So I got twelve and five. All right, let me see what I got. You have what? Twelve and five. Don't tell me you have twelve and five. I have thirteen and four. <laughs> 
So we, oh, you said that they were going to beat uh, the no, they're going to lose both of them, the Rams. You said they're going to beat the Niners. Who else did you say they're going to well, beat? So far, I have them only losing. <laughs> I may so I'm super optimistic. I'm yeah, losing are. one away game to the Rams. Other than that, I have them beating the Falcons, the Panthers, the Raiders, the Broncos, the 49ers, and the Seahawks. Well, I'm way more of an optimistic Cardinals fan than I thought. <laughs> they were they were really good on the road last year too. We were terrible at home. Yeah, and that's what I kind of and that's what my I, I have th- having three losses at home against the Chiefs, the Chargers, and the Rams. See, I think they're going to lose both to the Rams and the Chiefs and the Chargers. I mean, the Bucks are a mid tier team. The Saints are a mid tier team. The Eagles are a mid to low tier team. The Patriots are a mid to low tier team. Dude, I don't. How do you give the Saints that much credit? Okay, they're a low tier. They're a low tier team. Then I mean, the, yeah, the Saints. Who's their, that's quarter, what I'm who's their quarterback going to be? Uh, Jameis. Jameis, famous. I would roll out Jameis. Oh yeah, way, way. <coughs> excuse me, way more than uh, what's the guy's name? Oh, uh, the white Hill. boy, Taysom, Taysom Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Same. Saints depth chart. Uh, Andrews P. Is he healthy? I think so. Yeah. So Jameis, uh, Andy Dalton. His, oh yeah, Red Rocket. Done. There you go. Alvin Kamara. You're like, is Mike. the is the left guard healthy? <laughs> is the left guard healthy? We really, <laughs> really care about him. No, shout out Andrews. Uh, we went to high school with him. No, uh, Cody funny. went to middle school with him. I think. I did. Yeah. Um, he's a great guy. He's a he's an awesome guy. He's um, a monster. But he's out there making hella money now, and uh, we are proud of him back at home. Anyway, let's uh, let's go ahead and get into this last topic here. Um, wanted to talk about uh, just you know we don't talk much baseball, but wanted to the weird thing happened this week. The Madison Bumgarner in the first inning got ejected from the game. Did you see that, Cody? Yeah, I did. That's funny. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I was watching um, this video. That was uh, hilarious. <laughs> we were actually watching it together. I'm not going to lie. Um, it was John Boy Media. Check him out on YouTube. Uh, I think he's on Facebook, too. But he does some great breakdowns of uh, different base, a lot of baseball stuff, mostly. I think he does a few other sports here and there, uh, though. But uh, it, I didn't. I had heard about the Madison Bumgarner situation, but didn't really read into it or look into it at all. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't really, I see the diamondbacks. Like I see every night, whether they win or lose, but I have never, I haven't watched a game this season. Um, like start to finish. Have you watched any diamondbacks games? Yeah. I watched a few. Okay. Well, you know, thanks to the MLB, it's impossible to watch baseball unless you pay for the That's almost, it seems like that's almost any sport it's these stupid. days. It's like, like, why is it so hard Bally's- to watch? Bally Sports is not on like any streaming service. Other, you have to have like cable or exactly. satellite. But it's like, well, the game's losing popularity. Well, because we can't fucking watch it's it. It's not accessible. How the fuck am I supposed well, to watch a baseball game? To be fair, if you have a Disney or Disney Plus or ESPN Plus or whatever is it, it is, Hulu ESPN thing? Plus streams a lot of games. But it's going to be shit you don't care about. It's going to be like Detroit oh, versus yeah. Kansas City. Yeah, I, I don't have ESPN Plus. Probably get that. Yeah, um, I, I had it. I but hey, they um they had a tough schedule to start the season they're playing some really good uh really good teams and they're 500 yeah no they're right around there yeah. and uh they've been surprising a lot of people I'm so i'm so shocked. props to them and uh yeah, I, Merrill kelly that dude's been pitching his fucking ass off yeah that dude's been killing it um so diamondbacks might be worth checking out um this season because if they're going to be competitive they're, they're still be the worst in team in their division it, well and that's the saddest <laughs> thing right is because it's just such a tough division you've got the <laughs> dodgers the padres the Giants, uh, even the Rockies, despite losing a stud like Nolan Arenado, they get Chris Bryant, and they're still just fucking good. So yeah. uh, it's tough. It's a real tough division. It's that stadium they um, play in. And it's the stadium. The, yeah, the stadium the Rockies play in. But even Chase Field is known as uh, Hitter's Park. Oh, yeah. Totally. Um, it's very generous with the walls and the dimensions. But that's besides the fact because... We want to talk about uh, this mad bum ejection in the first. So just the I, I was taking some notes here quickly. This is what kind of what that happened. If you didn't see it, um, in it was it all happened in the first. Uh, Madison Bumgarner is on the mound. He gives up a home run in the first with no outs, and that's not a good start. And then, but but he makes it up. He proceeds to have two flyouts, and so it's two outs. And there's the third uh, or fourth, I guess fourth batter at the plate. Um, and there was a pitch that was outside, 
Uh, Bumgarner felt should have been a strike, so he's kind of upset about that. I mean, we have the benefit at home of seeing the they put the little box on the screen, yep. and it's kind of subject. It's pretty subjective. Uh, Cody, you were a baseball player growing up. the The strike zone, what you see on the TV, isn't necessarily what the ump strike zone is. Is that right? No, no, no. So never. And and every ump, you know, and it's just kind of any sport. It, it, there's always this. Uh, forever struggle between the players and the officials, whether it's basketball, football, soccer, baseball. Uh, it, uh, uh, players are going to see the game, and because you're 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 out there as the player, you feel it. You you have the ball, you have the plate, you have the whatever it is, and so you you have an idea of your perspective, but the officials have their perspective. Um, but getting off track, so Bumgarner felt it should have been a call to strike. Uh, the umpire disagreed. Uh, the TV disagreed, and it was a ball. So the the progression of this at bat goes on. Uh, Bumgarner throws two strikes. One of them in the zone, looking, and the other I think, and then the other one was swinging. outside of the zone, swinging. Yeah. So it's a it's a a one two count or two two count. I don't remember. And there's another pitch outside that Bumgarner thought should have been the third strike, and he kind of starts walking off the plate like it was. Um, but it was outside. Uh, looking on the TV, it looked like it was outside a little bit, just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it was definitely outside. Um, yeah. And so, uh, it's hard for me to defend Bumgarner when it's like, bro, just keep throwing these pitches. Like, yeah. Then he got him to fly out on the next pitch. Yeah. And so that's what I was gonna so say. So he's walking off like I struck him out twice. So yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. So he's walking off, and like you said, um, John Boy, shout out John Boy, he does a great job of breaking it down. He kind of li- does the lip reading thing and, and zooms in on the camera feed. Oh, it was perfect. It's yeah, and, and he did his <laughs> spot really on. Was. It's like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's probably the gist of what he. If, exactly if not exactly what he said, said. that's the yeah. gist of what he said. But yeah, he said uh, I struck him out twice. Because yeah. in his in Bumgarner's mind, from his perspective, it looked like his pitches to him looked like he struck him out twice, um, and 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 so I guess there's a new thing in the league where I have seen it a lot in the past couple of years. These players are using sticky substances, or here we go again, banned substances, um, in their glove or is on their hand, spider tack or what tack is it? or pine tar yeah. or whatever it is to get more. Um, grip on the ball to get more velocity or whatever it is. I'm not a baseball expert, but they've been crazy about it this year. Yeah. So I guess he was saying last year they were checking gloves and wrists and other things. And now this year they're just kind of like looking at the player's palm to see if there's any, well, they're, they're checking the pitcher's hand after every inning before they go in the, right. The dugout. So that's what was happening. So that's what was happening here after it was already but dicey. They, yeah. But that ump was like about to like make out with mad, but I was like, why was he yeah. holding his hand for so I'm gonna, long? I'm going to, I think I'm going to try and post a, in the video, in the YouTube video, I'm going to post a, try He's and post a screenshot just sitting there, just caressing his hand, not yeah, even caressing his hand and, but and make, and looking mad bum right in the eyes. And he, and this is going on for an uncomfortable amount of time. And it, it would be weird to have someone standing there and mad Bum's looking at his hand. Cause he thinks the umpire is looking at his hand and he's just massaging it. And mad Bum obviously knows there's nothing there. And the umpire knows there's nothing there. And he kind of feels like, okay, this is weird. This is different. And he looks up and sees that and makes eye contact with the ump. And is just kind of like, what the fuck? And then they they you they finally break. And yeah, you got something to say. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. And you. Fuck you. You don't see if the ump ever said anything back to him. But then the ump just ejects him right away. And that's when. Uh, but then he goes. Matt, off, he goes I'll off the rails. You. Yeah, I'll fuck and you I'll up. Fuck you like, up. Will you? Will you? <laughs> And Tori Lovello standing there looking like he just got he's like a deer in headlights like That was awesome. It's the end of the first inning. I have 8 innings left to have pitched and my starting pitcher just got ejected. I have no one warming up. I mean, at least you have the entire hopefully you one of your guys can extend an at bat or get on base and make the inning nice and long, you that know. That was funny. Um man, but that that's that's wild. I mean, if <sighs> He didn't say anything. He wouldn't have gotten ejected. No, and that's like, that's what I was kind of thinking is like seeing that the the pitches but, he was bitching about but they were, were all on his ass because he was bitching. Yeah, about the the balls and strikes. If there's one thing that I've learned, so they just did it to piss him off. And then why did the oh, dude come sure. out and apologize? Oh yeah, I think I did have that here, didn't I? Yeah. Um, the umpire, his name is Dan Bellino. Uh, he's issued an apology to the Arizona Diamondbacks pitcher Madison Bumgarner uh, in the first inning of Wednesday's game against the Miami Marlins. Um, 
And this is an article on ESPN.com. Umpire Dan Bellino issues apology after ejecting Arizona Diamondbacks pitcher Madison Bumgarner taking full accountability, quote-unquote, for the decision. Um, I would like to address my actions on May 4th involving Madison Bumgarner, the statement said. When I began my MLB career almost 15 years ago, I received some good advice. I was told to umpire every game as if my child were sitting in the front row. I felt short of those expectations this week. While I can't go back and change what happened, I take full accountability. I will learn from this incident, and I sincerely apologize. Um, I mean, I think the it's both both are I think both are accountable. Obviously, Bumgarner should have shut the fuck up. Yeah, but they egged him on though. They were like exactly what what really threw it like, over the on, edge. The on. umpire he gets paid. They all get paid enough to act a certain amount of professional and maybe Bumgarner is being a little a bit unprofessional but oh, it totally. goes over the they line they gave him the opportunity to say fuck you 20 times well right but it goes over the line when the umpire that. it takes two, they showed John Boy showed previ- uh, other clips of umpires checking for a banned substance it takes less than five seconds you yeah, feel it's, the it's palm quick, and you move on you're good and you're yeah, good nice but ass. he was Let's standing go. there massaging him for 15, 20, 30 seconds, yeah, like, it felt break like. Out the lotion, it felt way man. too. And you're not looking, and he's not looking at the palm. You Let think a down, physical inspection of yeah. the hand would suffice along with touching it. So you feel no sticky thing, you see no, no nothing sketchy, move on. I but mean, instead, you're staring him straight in the eyes because you're trying to send a message because he was bitching about your, your calls. Yeah, it's. Uh, so it's mutual. It's mutual. But he, he blew up, though. That was great. Yeah. No, so I think it's... That's an awesome video. I don't think it's appropriate for Bumgarner to react the way he did, but also... No, I very think, unprofessional. I think the umpire's more in the wrong at the end of the day. I agree. It's because... What did, what did he even do? Mad Bum didn't really do anything. He just anything. bitched. He just bitched a lot. Yeah. And, and that's something... That's, that's half of baseball. They all bitch. That's something Everybody that the, bitches. the umpire could even pull Tori Lovello aside and be like, hey... Your pitcher might not like my calls, but I need but him to needs, pipe down. He needs, he needs to, to shut, shut up. up. That could yeah. be a sidebar. Well, because you set the tone in the first inning, so all he's got to say is, right. I'm not going to put up with this This is how shit. I'm calling it. He's got to so deal this, with it. So, yeah, he needs to shut up or he's going to be out of here. That's what should have happened. Yeah. But they it, gave him the opportunity to say, fuck you. Yeah. It just, and and it, I'll fuck you up. And that's where I think, the because the umpire, I think, had 100% of the ground until he did that weird palm shit. Cause that was he, that was strange. That was, that's where he immediately became in the wrong, and that's Why where the table turned. Why do you need to rub turn. his hand for thirty seconds? So weird. It's a power trip, right? Yeah. And I that's so. that's another thing I hate as an because you you you've played baseball. You're you're an athlete. Michael Benjamin, he's an athlete. Him and I are on a on an adult league team right now. There's a dichotomy, I mean, uh, if you'll call it that, or there's a con, like I said, there's a constant struggle between players and reps, and it's like, at what point does it become personal? Like everyone, all these play people are human umpires officials they're human but it's like at what point why aren't you being fair why aren't you being even why are you so bad at your job and it just doesn't make sense that like something like that where he's going to make it personal and get offended that madison bumgarner is disagreeing with his calls to the point where he's going to go on a weird power trip like we had just had an instance where one of our players was kind of jawing off to the ref during our last game and um the ref, the official got at one point got like our player. He was sitting on the bench during a timeout, and the official came or halftime, I think it was, and the official came up and got like right in his face and was like, "You need to understand," or like, "I'm calling the game this way," and like Mike was like, "Yo, we're all adults here. Like, you need to you need to show some respect." And it's like I think that bubbles up to the pro level, um, especially where these pro players in basketball, baseball, uh, hockey, probably they feel comfortable talking to the refs or talking back to the refs but in all my experience with it when have you ever seen someone bitch about a call and have it overturned never <laughs> never so bum Gardner needs to just over, shut the fuck up and pitch exactly you can't booker needs to shut the fuck up and play basketball well it's different when draymond green can sit there and talk all day long to the refs and not get a single technical or anything but that's what i'm saying why risk it when every official has a different tolerance level like there are going to be there so those super professional officials that understand like hey this is the territory these players are going to complain but i'm just going to continue to call the game how how i see fit and not let any outside influences affect me but then there's a motherfucker like scott foster who sees oh son's game chris paul's playing i'm gonna fuck him 
fucking. I'm gonna fuck him. Now, in fairness, I'm gonna lay him down. And we're kind of getting we're kind of getting off track here, but Scott Foster, the last game he officiated against with against the Suns, wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. No, we lost that game legitimately. It wasn't because of Scott Foster, but it is funny to see the stat of well, yeah, that stat Chris was Paul. Ridiculous. It just yeah. it doesn't make him look good. It doesn't really make Chris Paul look that good. Um, it's just a bad look, and it doesn't make the NBA look good. It doesn't. I mean, I guess Chris Paul is probably the least comes out the cleanest in that. But at the end of the day, a player contributes to that toxic because there's it does. It, I don't think Scott Foster likes Chris doesn't like Chris Paul for no reason. I can't imagine it's for no reason. There's got to be a reason. That would be interesting. I'm sure maybe it'll come out someday. But <laughs> right after he retires. But yeah, no, that's that's that, I'm glad that kind of did uh, unravel into an interesting conversation about uh, you know players versus officials and umpires, and uh, just how the human element really comes in. And there's been talks in the MLB, especially, and I think they've tried it in the minor leagues with the electric strike zone, com- electric strike zone, just yeah, Im- Im- removing the home plate umpire altogether, <laughs> and then yeah. eventually probably eliminating all umpires and just having it all be virtual. Well, they'll still have the the home plate umpire i think they'll just let balls and strikes be called by the well, computer there will be someone down there'll be a quote-unquote umpire down there with an earpiece that'll the computer will say that was safe that was a strike that was yeah. a ball so he can signal it and that would be cool know. but like remember just recently they got um they added the challenging thing to baseball you never used to be able to challenge anything in baseball yeah so well, that, that's a step for them and well and know. are they're talking about doing a, even a pitch clock now um, they already have a pitch clock. Is it, it's in the MLB now, right? The pitch yeah. clock. And they're trying to increase the pace of play because shit was slowing down so much. Yeah, someone just got someone just came out and bitched recently about that. Because they got like a free strikeout or a walk or something like that yeah, because they, of the rule? They gave the, the runner first base because the pitcher was taking too long. Yeah. On a full count. Well, I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, you know the rules, so just hurry up and throw the ball. I mean, I can I can sit there and I have the patience to get through a baseball game on like the majority of people because it's I don't know I, I like watching baseball it's fun it's relaxing yeah you know you don't have to be fully invested you can watch the app it's, at, it's the best back rowing, oh, back rowing, back rowing. Um, background noise you could ever have is a baseball game yeah yeah no I agree yeah so no that's good that's solid so we covered the Suns. Um, like we said, we're recording this on Saturday, the 7th of May, and they got a game tomorrow on the 8th of May. So by the time you listen to this, predictions go. Um, the Suns will be 3-1. and one. They're going to get a win in Dallas, and then they're going to come okay. home, and they're going to finish the series out. What's the score? Uh, the final score will be 115-98. to 98. We're going to win. We're going to blow them. 98? Okay. Out. We're going to blow them out. We're gonna blow them. We're gonna blow. We're gonna blow them. Don't blow them. What about you? I'm what gonna do, blow them. What is your prediction? Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do a when, 109, 102 Suns. So close game, but the Suns win it. Yeah, they'll be three and one by the time they listen to this podcast. Yes, it's gonna happen. All right, you heard it here. So either uh, make fun of us in the comments or <laughs> praise us for being gurus, but. I think you guys know. I think we all know the sun. When you look at it, the Suns, whether it's five games, six games, I don't think it's going to go to seven games. But no matter how many games it takes, no, the Suns are going to win seven. this series. Yeah, right. Um, the Warriors next. The Cardinals. Um, there's a lot of questions. I think by the time we convene for our next episode, the schedule, the definitive schedule, will be back out, and Michael Benjamin will be back in the studio. Uh, so we might again go through the the schedule one more time. Um, because timing matters and we'll see, we'll break down those, especially those first six games without Hopkins and see how it's, how our outlook is. And, and it might change. Uh, cause I, uh, I am more optimistic than I expected. I think they're going to win 13 games. Cody thinks they're going to win 12 games. That's a, that's a lot of games. We're real optimistic over yeah, here. I are. guess we really um, are. <laughs> I'm very curious to know if, uh, Michael Benjamin is as optimistic as we are. Um, I feel we like a little too heavy on the wins. I think. <laughs> yeah, we but... might have. We might have been. Uh, we might have been. But we'll find out. Only time will tell. This is the prophecy year. The official prophecy year. Um, I don't know if we can ever find that picture. I don't know where that picture I know, is. Oh, I'm so sad. I, lost I don't know that. who took it. Yeah, I, I lost took, it. I took it. You took it. Yeah. yeah. On Snapchat. But um, yeah, that's that's what we got for you today. Uh, had to convene for this uh special episode. Uh, I am Chris Patrick. 
uh cody tallman you got anything else to say nope that's it have a good day everybody that's all folks all right we got it we got a new intro and we got a new outro uh let us know what you think and we'll see you next time